Hello and welcome to a, another episode of Fork Full of Noodles. I'm Krish Mohan. Before we get into this week's episode, I want to let you guys know that if you would like to support Fork Full of Noodles and DIY socially conscious comedy content, you can donate to my Patreon at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Everything starts at only $2 a month, so go to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha to find out all the details, the different tiers, the rewards, and the goals of what you'd be supporting. All right, now let's dive into this week's episode. Community paralegals and community policing are revolutionary ideas, but not entirely new. Right With the rise of the Me Too movement, we see how people are pushing the shift of the idea of the law. And the fact that the prison industrial complex is starting to be taken down little by little thanks to prison strikes, there is a new form of justice that is being enacted alongside all of these things. These are the social prisons that we are seeing now set in motion by a lot of these recent movements. To explain what I mean, let's look at what happened to Louis C.K. over the summer. To get refreshed, Louis C.K. was the center point of controversy last November when it was revealed that he had masturbated to completion, super gross phrase, uh, in front of various women. In August, it was revealed that he made a surprise appearance to the comedy cellar in New York City, and then the internet exploded. Now, uh, the issue that a lot of people had with this, that it was only nine months since this scandal was broken by the Me Too movement. And there are some people calling on him to never perform again. And there are even some people saying that what he did was the equivalent of rape and that when it comes to these sort of allegations, there are no gray areas. That is troubling. If we are to say there are no gray areas when it comes to sexual assault and rape, we are also giving a wide open claim to law enforcement and the powers that be to take away degrees of crime in the current prison system. So basically what we're saying is that it's okay to have a weed smoker be in prison for the same amount of time as a murderer. No gray areas, right? I mean, if we don't find a way to figure out how to make these social prisons work, this idea could be co-opted by the corporate prison industrial complex and used against us to put us all in prisons. The idea of the social prison is pretty new, so the rules aren't totally set, but they need to be. The question that needs to be answered is how long are these people who broke these social contracts supposed to be ostracized? And what about the idea of redemption? Much like the an actual prison system, it seems like the social prisons need some reforming and organizing. The idea of the social prison is driven by anger, and I get it. In a lot of cases, you know, the, uh, the, of these sexual assault cases, the justice system has failed its people. And in some cases, what they do isn't punishable by the law. So we turn to these social prisons using call-outs and shame. But shame doesn't work when you say the human being is wrong rather than the actions. Driven by shame, we push people like Louis C.K. inward and towards other people that are only going to validate each other's behavior. Instead, I say, let's look at what we want to do with the real prison system and rehabilitate. If we teach these people a little bit more compassion and a little bit more empathy, right, and show these people that have shown remorse for their misgivings that they can be better, maybe we can start reducing the number of sexual assaults. Louis C.K. apologized, and since his performance at the Comedy Cellar hasn't resurfaced, at least at the time that I'm filming this video, he hasn't. Right? But guys like Bill Cosby and Brett Kavanaugh don't seem to have any remorse for what they've done. Cosby was laughing during his arrest, and Kavanaugh proved himself to be unstable and not fit for the job of being a Supreme Court judge. Right? I, I, I feel like I feel like he's going to call Ruth Bader Ginsburg a bitch for disagreeing with him, and then he's going to flip a table because he has anger management problems, right? And I'm sure there will be some men out there that consider this to be, like, a true sign of leadership instead of someone whose spouse probably doesn't want to touch them. 
just like those in the APAC system. People that are remorseful and are looking for redemption shouldn't be defined by their crimes, right? Look, we've all done stupid things as kids, right? I mean, I myself have set fire to and melted several of not just my toys, but also my sister's. And if I was defined by that forever, I wouldn't have the opportunity to do a lot of the things that I'm proud and excited about. All this proves is that we're not mature enough as a society to accept apologies and encourage with positive reinforcement. Think about that one family member, you know, that uh, locks into that one goofy thing that you did when you were a child, right? And, it, and you're sitting around at Thanksgiving and you're talking about all your accomplishments for the year and they come out of the woodwork and remind everybody that you wore whitey tighties till you were 14, right? It's a real SMH moment. That, that's shake my head for the older cats out there. It's a hard task to forgive, but if someone like Louis C.K. has shown remorse and are ready to work on themselves as a human being, then I think we should be able to try to offer them a second chance. What we need to do is decide how long they need to stay in this social prison and allow them to find a way to talk about their transgressions when they come out, if they're willing to see their mistake and work on themselves, then I think society should help them out. And yeah, sure, nine months after your controversy is a bit too soon. You know, I, I, I think he came a little too soon there. But these social prisons can be a powerful tool in today's world where there is a lack of trust in the justice system and even less trust in each other. Like how the community paralegals can help us fight back against corporate exploitation of the legal system, social prisons can help us fight back against the exploitation of people by people. And how community policing can help us reduce the violence from law enforcement, social prisons can help us reduce the violence of people by people. So all they really need is a community to be built around them to help them figure out what they're all about. As much as we champion for the disenfranchised, we can't forget about those that need help fitting into a changing world or a world that is different than what they remember it. We can do that by reinforcing the ideas of compassion, empathy, and redemption to rehumanize those that we've forgotten were human. We, we can use the community at large to push the law and those that are supposed to enforce those laws towards a direction of protecting the people and the planet. We can build a community and a society where we are constantly learning and building instead of saying that there is only one way to do the right thing, right? There are several, and it is going to take all of us working together to try all of these options. And if we don't, then we might wind up in a society that imprisons us all. That has been your fork full of noodles for this week. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the, the episode. Uh, we've got a lot more coming up in the upcoming weeks. Uh, but if you would like to support fork full of noodles, uh, this is what I do full time. I uh, uh, tour with comedy. Uh, I'm a stand-up comedian that tours full-time, and I create comedy content full-time. If you would like to support these things, please donate to my Patreon at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, all of that starts at $2 a month. All of my stuff is going to be available for free. There's very little that's going to be behind a paywall, but if you would like to show appreciation and financially support this show, because uh, it's a lot of work to produce a show like this every single week, uh, you can donate to my Patreon at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, if you can't support this show financially, I completely understand. Uh, but a great way to help this show is by sharing. Share it with some friends. Share it with some enemies. Share it with anybody you think would enjoy content like this. Uh, and if you would like to, uh, you can follow me. You can like my Facebook page. You can give this video a thumbs up. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Krishmohanhaha. Uh, and you can check out my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com. I have live stand-up comedy shows coming up in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I will be in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. I will be in Frederick, Maryland, Williamsburg, Maryland. I will be in Norfolk, Virginia, Richmond, Virginia, Charlottesville, Virginia. I'm going all over the place, guys. 
uh, come hang out with me on t- uh, while I'm on tour. It's always good to see fans of the show. Uh, we'll, we'll sit down. We'll, we'll get a drink. We'll ha- uh, hang out. It'll be a good time. You can check out my entire tour schedule at ramennoodlescomedy.com. We've got lots more Forkful of Noodles coming up. I'm very excited to be back. Like I said, if you want to support this show, share the hell out of it. Give it a like uh, and donate to the Patreon at patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha. Uh, Check out all of the links below. Sign up for the email list to get updates uh, every single week or every single month to find out what's going on with me. Uh, But thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for supporting and sharing. Uh, to all of the people that are already patrons, thank you guys so much for, for donating. Uh, it, it means a lot. Every little bit helps. But till the next video, uh, thanks for getting into it, and we'll see you on the road.